both Trump and Biden, both candidates for president, presumably, have their own special counsels. And this is Washington. Big news first out of the Biden administration, namely Joe Biden himself has been caught red-handed in a document scandal. In many ways, it's an absurd uh, situation we're in uh, because Biden has, it's been confirmed, but he's admitted or finally confessed that he had so-called classified information in various locations from his days as vice president, or that's what he says. Now, they found out about this back in November, the beginning of November, a week before the election, and we only found out about it this week. And I'm convinced we found out about it this week because they figured out that the new House Republicans were to come in and figure out something was up. Now, of course, the absurdity of this is that uh, they're going after Donald Trump for similar behavior. This is, the, this is what you have to remember. You got to take a step back. I would just want to highlight the absurdity of this. 10, 12 years ago, Judicial Watch found out that Bill Clinton had tapes he kept after he left office, and the tapes recorded him talking to foreign leaders and members of Congress. We thought that was quintessential presidential activity, that, uh, the, and the recordations would be the type of records the archives, National Archives should have. So we asked them to get them. We got the proverbial hand to the face. We sued in federal court and the National Archives the Justice Department and a federal court judge says, too bad. The president has uh, almost unreviewable authority to designate records as personal or uh, presidential. And the Justice Department went so far as to say, oh, if he has records after he leaves office, they're presumptively personal. So whether they, were classified, whether they had initially been classified or not, it didn't matter because under the presidential records, he could designate any record as personal. And all presidential records uh, you know, the presidential record classification subsumes um, any classified records. So classified records are uh, part of presidential records necessarily. So when they changed their mind and changed their position and ignored the precedent and ignored the plain law and the Constitution to target Trump over records he had after he left office, uh, we blew the whistle. And of course, they didn't stop the Justice Department because they were out to get Trump. But in blowing the whistle, you may recall here on, on, on the weekly update and elsewhere, my highlighting the fact that every president has records like this or lightly has records like this that are either classified or otherwise presidential under this new theory of the law. And so they threw out the rule book to get Trump, but I guess they didn't care what the consequences would be. And the irony is the consequences are that Joe Biden has been caught up in this state in this same specious interpretation of the law. Now, of course, they're not applying my interpretation of the law. They're pretending all of these are crimes. So what we have here is the president of the United States, Joe Biden, according to his own Justice Department and own National Archives, is being implicated in a crime. And as I said, they covered this up. They pretended to investigate it for two months. And in Garland, in finally being forced to appoint a special counsel to look into uh, what Biden did here, admitted that the, the uh, U.S. attorney he initially appointed to look at this uh, has found uh, some issues that would require further investigation. So what a, what a mess the corrupt Biden administration and the corrupt Justice Department have made about this, right? And, you know... A lot of this, we're you know, some of this we're, we're expected just to presume is true. Like these were records from the White House. They were Biden's records uh, that um, they were accidentally left in places or, you know, we don't know any of that to be true. I mean, the first batch they admitted was found um, down the street. I'm pointing back here. Where is it? It's literally a... a uh, like four or five blocks away. It's a, it's a building at the bottom of Capitol Hill. It's a well-known spot. It's a, it's a good restaurant in there and, um, you know, lots of offices and such. And the Chinese-funded uh, Penn Center, right? Is that what it's called? He, Biden had some hideaway office in there. And his lawyer found the classified records supposedly in November because they were moving. And, you know, I've been doing this work at Judicial Watch for a long time. 
we've worked with a lot of law firms, and I don't recall a, a thinking we could use law firms to move records and to move offices, to engage in office moving. Usually, you know, you pay a lawyer to move, there's something up there, that's my point. And then they admit, oh, we have records in his home. Two places, one in his library and one in his garage. So what does that tell me? First of all, how did the records get there? Three different locations. And I mean records being the classified version of them. Uh, because that's where, you know, supposedly the legal issue is big, is big, you know, and I would assert if he wanted to, Biden could make the point, these are not classified because in taking them, they became declassified. That all being said, but how did they get there? And when you have records in three different locations like this, it suggests that they were being used. Now, do you think Biden used them? I don't. But it does, it is consistent with someone else using them. And who do you think in the Biden team would be using records like this, including records purportedly about Ukraine? Who do you think? Well, his, uh, his first name is Hunter and his last name is Biden. So I'm suspicious that these records aren't even necessarily White House records taken by Joe Biden. They could be records taken by someone else around him and improperly used and stored somewhere else if the Justice Department theory of the case is to be believed. But still, there was this cover-up, there's been no raid, no grand jury, only because of intense pressure over the last few days that they get forced into appointing a special counsel. I mean, uh, Garland came out, was it in late November, and said, oh, you know, we need a special counsel for, for uh, Trump. And he knew at the time Biden had done the same thing. So Garland's Justice Department is irredeemable. So Garland is running the Justice Department incompetently, to put it charitably, and just out outrageously, corruptly, uh, you know, if one is being blunt. And uh, if I were Republicans, forget about impeachment, we got to get someone, out, someone new as Attorney General. That's what I would be thinking about. And of course, this whole, this whole absurd attack on Trump, it was foreseeable it would bring in, if the law was being even modestly applied in a fair manner, other former presidents and other former vice presidents. Heck, every president since the classification system was developed by the federal government. So you're going back, I don't know, to Truman, maybe Eisenhower, under the modern classification systems. Do, they, do those families have classified records and presidential records under the new theory of law? Carter, Reagan, George H.W., George W., Obama. Don't get me started on Obama. I think his records have been sketchily handled uh, since the get-go. And of course, all their vice presidents, including Vice President Biden. Now, some say Biden doesn't have the right to do what, Obama, uh, what, what uh, Trump does did in terms of declassification or has that type of authority. I think, uh, now, when you think about the president's right to declassify records, uh, he's the president, he's commander in chief. The classification authority essentially originates with him and his constitutional uh, position as uh, chief executive and commander in chief. Now, under the president, now some, some records can be uh, declassified just separately under, uh, uh, as a result of presidential orders uh, by the vice president, but really specific and uh, kind of a narrow subset of records. Uh, but as I said earlier, uh, the Presidential Records Act allows the president to declassify records, presuming that he designates records as personal. If the records are classified, he designates them personal. There's no second guessing them. And that, uh, that rule applies to, vice president, um, to the vice president. So the vice president has the same powers under the federal statute as the president does in terms of designating records as personal and presumably any presidential records that he designates as personal that are also classified become personal. So it's not like either Trump or Biden did anything wrong. And, you know, forgive me, I'd like to see Biden, you know, be prosecuted if he did something wrong. But in this case, there's this, been this absurd, uh, absurd 
uh, interpretation of the law, an abusive and twisted interpretation of the law to get Trump, and the, uh, the gang in the Justice Department didn't care about the consequences. And now the consequences are Biden is facing a criminal investigation. Now, if Biden was, you know, had, uh, had a spine or understood the law, he'd recognize that he'd been had by the Justice Department. This is the charitable interpretation. And say, well, this is, this is obvious craziness. And he'd say, Tom Fitton's right, right? <laughs> These records are uh, presumptively personal and let's stop harassing presidents and former vice presidents, including me. And I'm shutting this down because I'm the president and I can. Now, but you know, it's probably too late for that, right? It's probably too late for that. Uh, but uh, at this stage, the way the Justice Department is going, uh, they won't be able to target Trump without targeting Biden. What, are they going to be co-defendants? Is that, is that going to be the way it works out? It, it just highlights the absurdity. Maybe we can bring in Bill. They can go get those sock drawer records now back that he's been hiding for years. Who knows what Obama has? Frankly, if I were a former president or former vice president, I'd be calling my lawyer. We don't know what's going on here. What records do I have here? Do, you know, we thought we were following the rules or, you know, these were the rules. Now they've upended them to go after Trump. Are we, are we liable too? But, you know, this is, this is life. And this, is, this shows you that the Justice Department is just so corruptly incompetent, it endangers the nation's security. It's destabilizing the government. Because if the President of the United States is going to be under investigation for his criminal conduct, assuming the Justice Department can even do that constitutionally, but it's another matter, there better be good reason for it. And there's really no good reason to be uh, targeting anyone over these records issues. But, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the grifter. And now Joe Biden is going to have his... Uh, his Corvette reviewed, maybe? Maybe they're going to take fingerprints off his Corvette to see who was at access to the garage. You know, given the way the Justice Department's been treating Trump, why not? And they appointed a special counsel who supposedly was a Republican or Trump-appointed U.S. attorney in Maryland. Turns out he's a friend of Rod Rosenstein, who was notoriously um, abusive and... Um, uh, uh, of Trump when he was in the Justice Department. They were trying to suppress the release of information about the corruption at the FBI and DOJ. This new special counsel was. So, you know, it's not going to necessarily mitigate the issue by having a special counsel, although now each, both Trump and Biden, both candidates for president, presumably, have their own special counsels. And this is Washington. And I keep on saying, if they'd listened to us, or, you know, more importantly, they had followed prior Justice Department and archives policy. And, and uh, you know, as, descri as described, I think, accurately by the courts, uh, none of this would be a problem. But they were trying to destroy Trump. Now, what's going to happen? I think if they can get away with it, they're going to exonerate Biden and keep on going after Trump. I think that's the more likely, the most likely result. But it was going to be difficult, more difficult politically. And it would be a shame if they were shut down because of politics as opposed to the rule of law being vindicated. But we'll see what happens. I guess if you're facing a criminal prosecution, any way that, you sh any way that it's shut down, as long as you're free from abusive prosecution, you're going to be happy with. But... What a nightmare. And so what Judicial Watch is doing is we're investigating. We already have a comprehensive investigation, a litigation project uh, uh, looking into the targeting of Trump on these records issues. And uh, I mean, for instance, we just sued uh, at the end of November, not that long ago, uh, DHS for communications between the Secret Service, the Department of Homeland Security, for communications between the Secret Service and the FBI on the search warrant and the raid on Trump's Florida home. So what's the secret there, right? Why can't we get these records? And it shows you there's this massive cover-up. It's one of, I think, of at least a half a dozen lawsuits. So you can be sure we're going to file a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit, at, well, a request 
uh, and then probably a lawsuit of re like this. Give us records about communications between you know, lawyers for Biden who supposedly were doing these searches and the Secret Service and things like that. And communications between the archives and Biden and other former presidents and vice presidents. Were they as upset about them potentially having records as they were in terms of harassing Trump? So we've expanded our investigation to include the Biden garage document scandal and the other stashes. And of course, there's another scandal here, which is the UPenn scandal side of it, which is, as those of you who have been following this issue closely over the last two years, now has been heavily funded by the Chinese government. And then, of course, there are other issues as it relates to the handling of classified information that Congress doesn't want you to know about because too often they get classified records sometimes. And the question is, do they keep records uh, that are either classified or information that is classified from those records, meaning they take notes and other things that become classified in virtue of their transcription. And so why is that important? Because someone like Joe Biden, who was a senator forever and a day, has all of his records hidden from the American people up in the University of Delaware as a result of a secret agreement to keep them away from the American people until he's free and clear of uh, politics. And Judicial Watch and the Daily Caller News Foundation has been suing to get access to those records and those secret deals to keep these records secret. And we've had, uh, it's kind of like a back and forth. We win, we lose at the lower court, we go to the appeals court, the appeals court kicks it back, and the lower court doesn't want to do it again, and you know now we're back up to the appeals court. And what's going on is the University of Delaware is desperate to avoid uh, uh, having to disclose details as to whether there were taxpayer dollars involved in this secret dealing or the management of the records. And the court, at least the Supreme Court of Delaware, has made it clear they want that type of information. And the lower court doesn't really seem interested in getting it. And so uh, we're back at the Supreme Court again asking for limited discovery to depose a uni uh, University of Delaware representative over Biden's Senate papers. What are the papers he's hiding there? I mean, why is there so... You know, Biden can stop all this with a drop of a hat. He can say, just give him access. I mean, I've been out of, he's been out of the Senate for, what, 10 years now? At least 10 years. Why not provide access to the records? And specifically, we've, you know, now we're fighting... Uh, the University of Delaware doesn't even want to tell us directly whether government dollars were used to maintain these records. Because if, they, if we find out, or the court finds out they were used to maintain the records, that triggers the FOIA applicability there in the state. As we say about the lower, opinion, lower court opinion, uh, the opinion should be reversed. The supplemental affidavit, which is the affidavit filed by the University of Delaware officials to try to stave off further judicial watch and court questioning, is nothing more than a document filled with state hearsay and vague assertions without proof, which at best show that the university did not engage in, in a diligent effort as required by law to review our requests. You know, and we've asked to vet the assertions directly, and they don't want to let us question anyone. I mean, essentially what they've gone around is, is they've gone around and started asking people were government, document, government dollars used, and people say no. But they provided no records about how the money spent. I mean, does that make any sense to you? It doesn't to us. And I don't think it will to the courts. The University of Delaware has been sitting on Biden Senate records for more than 10 years and is desperate to avoid any scrutiny of its secret deal with Biden to hide these records. The latest revelations about Biden's handling of classified records are, raise even more questions about what Biden is hiding up there in Delaware. So are there, are there secret records up there or classified records? I don't know. Maybe there should be a raid. You know, one other thing that popped out uh, recently is the, and this was just two weeks ago, and I have a feeling this story was leaked purposely given uh, the ongoing um, and secret, th then secret investigation of uh, the garage files, the Biden's garage files, or his secret files generally. Uh, the FBI didn't want to go after Trump, so they've leaked to the Washington Post. Initially, they didn't think there was a basis to harass him about the records, and they opposed a raid. 
and the raid was um, successfully pushed for by a Trump, excuse me, a Biden administration political appointee in the Justice Department. So this raid wasn't conducted or or uh, the result of, uh, you know, the recommendations of politically neutral civil servants. The career civil servants were all supposed to uh, fall down and worship whenever uh, that phrase is used. Uh, these were political hacks p- placed there by Joe Biden, and uh, they uh, forced the FBI over their objections, if the Washington Post is to, is to be believed, to raid Trump. Now, don't you think that story's leak is very in- interesting in light of, you know, we didn't know this at the time the story was published, but that they were protecting Biden? So the FBI, someone in the FBI saw this is going to blow up in our faces. Let's step away from it because it's going to come out. Biden's being protected and we're going to look like the goon squad as if we already don't. There is terrible corruption in our agencies, our law enforcement agencies, and they've been misused and abused to achieve political results by putting people on the dock by prosecuting them and harassing them. And that's so dangerous to a a Republican form of government. It's Putin-esque. So what's going to happen with the Biden documents? I don't know. There are now two special counsels looking at two presidents handling of records after they leave office. And, uh, you know, if, if they were competent, they'd say the law doesn't require us to pursue any of this. Let's all go home and call it a day. So Trump should get all the darn records back and Biden should get all the darn records back. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.